beginning with verse 3. You have been deceived by your own pride because you live in a rock fortress and make your home high in the mountains. Who can ever reach us way up here? You ask boastfully. But even if you soar as high as eagles and build your nest among the stars, I will bring you crashing down, says the Lord. Amen. Amen. The word of the Lord is blessed. Amen. So for a few moments, on today, I want to talk to you from the subject. I am a difference maker. Tell yourself, I am a difference maker. I want you to understand. As we begin to dissect Obadiah for the second time, a difference maker is an ordinary person uh -huh. who accomplishes <laughs> Sister Cindy extraordinary things by the power of Almighty God. I'll say that one more time. A difference maker is an ordinary person like you and like me who accomplishes extraordinary things by the power of Almighty God. A relationship is defined as the way in which two or more people are connected. As we know, relationships with our brothers and our sisters can be very rewarding. And relationships can be quite challenging. They can even be at times a struggle. Are y'all with me? <laughs> Relationships can and they will test the very fabric of our mental, physical, and spiritual makeup. <laughs> Relationships will sometimes test our maturity and our patience. Relationships can be a struggle, Reverend Slater, because even though we have things in common, such as faith in God, kingdom building, and the growth of this church, even though we stand on a lot of common ground, we still are very different. We come from different places. And because we come from different places, we have different cultures. And these different cultures lead us to having different experience, experiences connected to our being. Because of this, we see things and we experience things differently. And in our thinking, we process things in dissimilar ways. The difference is that we have as we walk in relationship can cause friction. They can cause us to be agitated. They can even cause us in the church to be angry, but we understand that even in the midst of our anger, we are to, to sin not. 
But no matter what, we can agree to disagree. And not divide over our differences because we've all been called out of darkness into his marvelous light to a higher level of service for his glory. David says, Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. But Sister Sharon, if I can keep it real on today, we know it is pleasant to dwell together in unity, but we also know that it is a challenge for us to dwell together in unity. Not only is it a challenge to dwell together in unity, it is a challenge that we maintain that unity. That simply means we have to work for it. How do we do it? The songwriter simply says we've come this far by faith. Leaning on the Lord, trusting in his holy word because he has never failed us yet. That is a shouting point because we serve a God that has never failed us yet. Even though we've had problems and we've had issues, he has never failed us yet. Amen. Sometimes we get sick and tired of being sick and tired, but God has never failed us yet. Sometimes we've been rejected. We've been ignored and we've been cast aside. But we serve a God that has never failed us yet. And Dr. McGuire, because the Lord has not failed us, we should do our best not to fail one another and not to make one another fall. I want us to understand on today that we do it in faith and we do it by faith. And see, what our goal is, is to be different makers. Uh -huh. For the glory of God in the lives of our brothers and our sisters. Tell your neighbor, say, I'm a difference maker. No matter what we're dealing with, we have the power to make a difference. And we have the power to make it through. We may deal with resistance in this world, but we have the power to make a difference. And we have the power to make it through. Sometimes we deal with unforeseen issues in the midst of trying to give God our all. But we can rejoice on today because we have the power to make it. Uh -huh. Come on. And the power to make it through. The songwriter simply said, great is thy faithfulness. Uh -huh. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All that I need. Thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness. Yes, Lord, unto me. In our text, we have the prophet Obadiah addressing the Edomites. Yes. And as we know from last week, the Edomites are the house of Esau. And Esau is the brother of Jacob. And we know about the struggle that they had even from inside Rebecca's womb. But Edom has become insignificant among the nations and greatly disliked. The issue is they've been deceived by their own pride and their lack of pride has caused them to act contrary 
to their brother Israel. When we are deceived by our own pride, it is defined as acting an act of causing ourselves to believe something that is not true about ourselves. Typically, it is done in order to gain some kind of personal accomplished feeling, making ourselves feel better, though falsely, about the life we live. Eden's pride tricked them into believing they can do and say whatever they wanted. And the reason they felt this way is because they felt that they were the source of their power. They were the source of their strength. And they felt that because of this, they were able to sustain themselves without God. They were able to sustain by their own means. And they felt that they were invulnerable or untouchable because of where they lived. Because of this <coughs> prideful thinking, Edom acted like a foreigner towards their brother. They acted like they didn't even know they were related. Sometimes we act like we don't know one another. Sometimes we act like we don't have the same father. Edom also took a stance of not getting involved when their brother was in trouble. And not only that, they treated their brother like trash. In the midst of their struggle. And when Israel was going through, they rejoiced because they were in agony. And they committed violent acts against their brother. And because of this, we know that Edom, the house of Esau, will be covered in shame and will be destroyed. But understand, my brothers and my sisters, this passage teaches us what we should not do. Amen. There's a lesson in every line of scripture. And sometimes we learn the best lessons from watching folks do stuff that we don't need to be doing. But we understand if we are going to be different makers, we have to learn to love our brothers and our sisters. Over dying let the people of God know that our value is not in what God has given us. It's not in where he's blessed us to live. It's not in the blessings he has bestowed upon us. And we as a people of God have to learn to stop worshiping our blessings. But our value is in God's anointing and appointing us, which lets us know that the power does not belong to us. All the power, all the praise, all the worship, it belongs to Almighty God. This passage informs us that our confidence and our faith must be in the Lord. And since our confidence and our faith is in the Lord, we must rely on him as we strive to navigate life. And not only must we rely on him as we strive to navigate life, we have to rely on him as we strive to navigate our relationships. 
Furthermore, we realize that it is God that orders our steps. Uh -huh. It is God, Brother King, that we are to lean on. It is God that we are to depend on. And we must understand it is God who will judge us on the final day of judgment. Lastly, we must seek to love one another and be there for one another no matter what we are going through because we are in relationship with one another. Tell your neighbor, I'm a difference maker. And if we're going to be different makers in this world, we must grasp the fact that we are to love our neighbor as ourselves. And we are to love one another with our conditions. We must be involved. And the key word is involved in a loving way. Did y'all hear me? We must be involved in a loving way when it comes to the lives of our brothers and our sisters. And always be willing to build them up. Not seek to tear them down. As, we listen, as you listen to this sermon, I want you to ponder the fact that I want to sincerely be in the life of my brother and my sister. And I want to do the best I can to help them be fruitful and faithful representatives of the kingdom of Almighty God. We will strive to be sympathetic and empathetic when it comes to understanding one another. Because we are striving to be loving channels that desire to walk in peace with one another. And we're striving to move in a spirit of goodwill empowered by the Holy Ghost. And we don't, we don't, we don't, we don't rejoice. We don't have a part. We don't, we don't celebrate the fact that our brother or sister is struggling. We aren't to kick them when they are down. We, we, but what we are to do is to lend a hand in love. Because we are striving to be difference makers for the glory of God. So with all that said, how can we make a positive difference? We don't want to be like you. How can we make a positive difference in each other's lives when we don't see eye to eye? How do we make a positive impact with our brothers and our sisters when they are culturally different? So we ask yourself, how do you just ready to do? I become a difference maker. Number one, to be a difference maker, our hope must be in God. Not where we are, not where we reside, and not in what we have. Number two, to be a difference maker, we should be willing to be givers and not resort to be takers or deceivers. Number three, to be a difference maker, we must be faithful to God and willing to be loyal to one another in the good times and 
in the bad times. If we do what God's commanding us to do, we will receive everything that God has promised us. If you want to be a difference maker on today, you will receive what God has promised. Yeah. If you desire to truly be what God has called you to be, you will receive what God has promised. If you desire to partake of the greater that God has for you, you will receive what God has promised. If you desire to walk in the holiness of God, you will receive what God promised. The songwriter said, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ, the solid rock, I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. I want you to be encouraged on today that no matter what you would do, you are standing firm on the solid rock. You may be struggling, but you are standing firm on the solid rock. You may get discouraged sometimes, but you're standing firm on the solid rock. You may be looking forward to the next level of grace. Stand firm and grip the solid rock as God molds you for the next level. Stand firm and grip the solid rock of the free we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Isn't it good to know that we serve a God that loves us more than anything? Isn't it good to know that we serve a God that is willing to walk with us, to talk with us, and to tell us that we are his own. Isn't it good to know we serve a God that forgives, that sustains, that saves. Isn't it good to know we serve a God that is all-knowing and will aid us, will guide us, will keep us just as the Savior to help you comfort, strengthen, and keep you being willing to aid you. He will carry you to death or death no problem. God cannot solve, continue to make the impossible, make it happen. There's a mountain to happen. Continue to make the impossible happen. There's no valley too low. Continue to make the impossible happen. There's no storm that's too dark. Continue to make the impossible happen.
to me to be different man. The psalmist says, that God is the one who keeps the foundation firm. Do we believe that God is the one who keeps the foundation firm? If we're struggling, it's God. If we're rejected, it's God. If you feel like you're all alone, it's God who keeps the foundation firm. If you're troubled, it's God. If you're weak, it's God. If you feel like you've been forsaken in life, it is God who keeps the foundation firm. In the midst of ministry, and sometimes the ministry can be a lonely road. It's God. It's God. Who keeps it firm. Sometimes you're going to fall. Sometimes you're going to stumble. Because all have sinned and fallen short of God's glory. But it's still God that keeps the foundation firm. When we struggle with our relationships, and we will struggle with our relationships, Lean on God. Lean on God. Lean on God. If we're going to be difference makers, we got to lean on God because God keeps the foundation firm. The songwriter says, Time is filled with swift transitions. Not on earth. I move and stand. But it should be seen. Build your hopes on things eternal. And hold to God's unchanging hand. We're approaching 60. In the life of the ministry of this church. And as we approach 63 years, we understand that God is away out of nowhere. <coughs> we understand that He's the good shepherd. After 63 years, we understand that he's the great I am. He's the lily of the valley. The bright and morning star. The Bible says he's wonderful. The Bible says he's powerful. He's the most high. He's the good teacher. We all know him as an all-sufficient savior. See, God can't be controlled. He can't be contained. Yeah. You can't get God out of your mind. Yeah. And you can't get God off of your hands. Because he's marvelous. Yeah. He's a calm in the midst of the storm. He's a healer, a protector, a strong tower. So you know him as a comfort. He is the door. The Bible says he is the way, he is the truth, he is the life, he's Mary's baby, he's living water, he's the bread of heaven, he knows, he understands, he cares, he sympathizes, he sustains, he creates, he maintains, he lives. 
lifts up. He's our joy. He's our rock. He's our peace. The songwriter said, God sent his son. They called him Jesus. What they call him? What? They call him Jesus. Brother Brown, he came to love. Yeah. Heal. And forgive. I'm done. But he bled and died. To buy our pardon. An empty grave. Is there to prove that my Savior lives? We should all be rejoicing right now because he lives. I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know that I know that I know he holds the future. And life is worth a living just because he lives. So my brothers and my sisters, you can be a difference man. Because he lives. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Because he lives. I can stay and withstand the fiery darkness of the enemy. Just because he lives. I have joy. Unspeakable joy. Because he lives. I can walk in the goodness of life. Because he lives. I got joy. I got peace. I got hope. I got love. Because he lives. Yeah, preach that thing. Because he lives. Because he lives. Yes, yes, sir. I am a difference maker. Amen. Amen. Because he lives. You are a difference maker. Just ask the Savior to help you. Yeah. Comfort you. Strength you. And keep He's willing.